please. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to One Million Cups. Uh, a bit of a late start, but I promise the content will more than make up for it this morning. How many of you guys are here for the first time at One Million Cups today? Welcome. Welcome. I think you'll like it. For those of you who have been here before, uh, either you do like it, or this is the best place to get free coffee in the season. Uh, so, you know, we'll take you to one that's fine. Uh, for those of you who are new, the way this works, two entrepreneurs from our community come up here and they tell you about what they're building, what cool technology, what cool products, what cool companies they're creating here in our, in our community. They do that for six minutes, then for 20 minutes, there's Q&A from you guys. Ask questions, uh, seek clarification, think through suggestions you might have for them, and most importantly, think through connections you can make to help them grow those companies. That's your end of the bargain in exchange. Our friends at Kawa have provided us with this wonderful free coffee. Uh, we do appreciate them. And we could not do it without a strong team of organizers, Chris Bennett, Marianne Bauer, JJ Roberts, Danielle Callahan, who's not here, along with Carly and Lex, who uh, are the backbone of this organization, but I'm going to turn it over to my good friend Sid to come up and tell you a little bit about Eastbound. Sid. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I thought I would just tell you guys how we kind of arrived at this point. Uh, four weeks ago, we were with our publicist in Tampa, and he said, Sid, are you busy today? And I said, no. He said, I'll set up Wi-Fi in my car, you come with me, I want you to meet someone. And he walked me in to meet Rick, the mayor. And I was blown away. I spent time in Silicon Valley, Washington, D.C., and I interned in Dallas as a kid. I left that meeting with Mayor Christman and his staff feeling inspired. I went home and told my wife that I kind of had a hint of being back in the valley, where I spent two years incubating a technology firm. So it was a heck of a compliment that I can give to the city and to Mayor Christman. So that's how we're here today. We launched uh, 10 and a half weeks ago, and we want to introduce you to uh, this token. While we want you to watch this video, I want you to keep a few thoughts in mind that we are all sales agents. We are all walking billboards. A picture is worth a thousand words, and so is user-generated content when it's authentic and organic. We introduce you to me. So the Less than 1% of them have more than 1,000 downloads in their existence. 
we hit that number in 51 days. So we validated our proof of concept. Now I'd like to show you something. We've got Mary. So we're testing a new application today called Mary 360. Highly recommended. So I'm now mirroring my phone onto the uh, uh, PC. So let's kill it. Maybe I'll do that. So I want to show you uh, a few guiding principles. So at Mespoke, we will always follow the user experience, not what design dictates. So if you can see here, user experience as such. Design came along much earlier and said, this is what the user experience will be. Please keep that in mind. And then keep this fundamental design principle in core part of our DNA in mind. Virginia's company is already saying that 9.2 times out of 10, we are influencing retail transactions downstream, either directly or indirectly from our influence. Demand where it goes on to say that 22% of the world, sorry, 22% of the world, forgive me, in North America and Europe is digitally savvy. It is said that this block of people have a direct purchasing power of 69%. So here you have two out of 10 people influencing directly or indirectly seven out of transactions, seven out of 10 transactions online. So now we'd like to show you Mespoke. So here we are at uh, Mespoke and what we have come up with is uh, our version of the world is that we are all walking billboards. We are all sales agents for the brands we uh, uh, admire and have affinity for. I guarantee you, every single one of us right now is wearing between four and six brands. If we were Kim Kardashian or LeBron James, we'd be monetized for that. We believe the world is a bit different. We're not in this for the affiliate trap to give everyone 10 cents on the dollar for everything they give us. What we've done here is filed a provisional patent that allows you to say, you know, I don't know Natalia, but I love her sense of style and I'd like to see what she's wearing. All we do is click this button and you arrive at a Lexus. You didn't use a hashtag, you didn't comment, you didn't like it. So if a picture's worth a thousand words, so is user-generated content when it is authentic and organic. Now let us take you one step further. This is my profile. Because of our patent, I'm allowing you to look inside my closet. We take it one step further. How about I become your mannequin, not the mannequin on the Nordstrom sales floor, without a hashtag, without a comment, without a like. The day and age where the mannequin on the Nordstrom sales floor is over because retail is hurt. Big box retail needs innovation. They neglected it for years. The day and age where third party apps will be the ones that drive a direct to consumer model is here. What Miesville intends to do is offer these brick, brick and mortar retailers a version of the world that we call speakerverse. This is the top speakers. So we are Mespoke speakers in volume. The top speakers in our platform that are your inspiration for stylizing and accessorizing. Then we give you some other data. The top brands for the week. This data will be refreshed every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Then we give you the top retailer and the top categories. We have the ability to democratize retail. We are Facebook, you are Facebook. I'm sure there's a lot Sid wanted to get into in the time, but we've got plenty of time for Q&A, so maybe in Q&A we can dig into a little bit more uh, sure. uh, some of the details. So first question. Please. What, what is the motivation for someone to be one of your speakers? What, what do they get out of it? Yeah, it's a great question that we're asked every, every week. Virginia and I were just in New York talking to a, a brand. And the answer is simple. We've done extensive research. Psychologists have come back and said, why the heck is it that the minute we hit get and post, that we don't own this content, but we do it every day? Let me just quantify it for you. 1.9 billion images are uploaded to social media a day. 38,194 images are uploaded to Instagram every 60 seconds. You're not getting, you're not answering my you're question. Not, the, fu are, the fulfillment is, in the end, after we scale our community, we will shop, we will offer a revenue share model back to our user to have an incentive to keep shopping at Adidas or Nike. Right now we're scaling, we launched 11, uh, 10 and a half weeks ago. Once the user gets on board, builds what we call, Sam, you just go home, uh, profile on my page, profile. Um, once someone builds social capital, which is an algorithm that takes 
the amount of volume or the likes that you have on a picture, plus how many brands, plus your activity. We will take social capital here and give you a coupon or an incentive to shop at Nike again. The back end of that, to address your question, is that a revenue, a revenue share model comes into play for us from a monetization standpoint, either using the Rakuten uh, affiliate network or Shoppable's universal shopping cart. Yes? How does one become social capital person? Or, or part, part, maybe, part, how does one become? Sure. So we, we, we believe that all of us are walking billboards and we have some, some level of affinity, whether it's at Walmart, Target, Banana Republic, Nordstrom, or Neiman Marcus. We are all walking billboards and we're inspired. So next time you're in a coffee shop, sir, take a look around. People in front of you and behind you are probably wearing four to six brands. They are inspiring people. We have social capital every day that we wake up and leave our house, house and homes. We are saying that we will aggregate that for you and provide that out for you. Answer your. If, if you'd like to hear from an arithmetic standpoint, it yeah, is the sum of. Question really is more about the speaker. Sure. Be, being the social capital spokesperson. Sure. I'm getting. Sure. So it's an algorithm that we take all your activity on Facebook. Plus, if you see here, what we've done is we've given you this device here, which is the 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 the. the the amount that this speaks to you. So we take that plus the activity, plus all the brands you have to give you a calculation. And there's a band that it falls between. May I ask another question? Sure. So that I can understand this better. Sure. I have several uh, avenues of information that I use. So if I understand correctly, you would monitor them? No, no, no. This no. is an organic platform. We've gone live uh, to prove our proof, proof of concept using fashion. So we can only allow people to tag garments, accessories, jewelry, and time pieces. So based on that, social capital, where you're a walking billboard, yeah, okay. we've come up with an aggregate of what your, what your value is. We don't care that you're not LeBron James, or you don't suit up every Sunday and play for the two big bucks. We believe every single person in this room is affecting a sale, either directly or indirectly, for these items. But all the sourcing, is, all the sourcing is within the app. So yeah. as you become yeah. a member yeah. and you, you tag, and all of that sourcing is within the app. You tag into whatever you have there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you would follow that. So Absolutely. So when you right, upload. So I become a member. I take a picture. I tag this as Rabbit Bone. I purchased it at Nordstrom's. And I put it out there. If someone sees it and likes it, they can raise the volume. And I get more social capital. If I tag enough, then I'm going to get even more. And by numerous brands, I get even more. Maybe we hope to monetize from that, from that new capital. We hope to, yeah. right? So right now, not. I don't have anyone offering the coupons yet. Another question? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I'm manually tagging. The yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is our provisional path that we found. We asked for two simple pieces of data. The, so what we've done is we've mapped out the entire human body as a mannequin. So everything you can physically put on your body, we've, we've mapped out. All we ask you for is two things, category and brand. And then we take that and we embed everything else you need. So once you're done here, you come back and you say, God, I love the way that Lorianne is dressed. I wonder what her pants are. And I'm too afraid to ask her. <laughs> no hashtag, no like, no commenting. You arrive at the root of Top Shop today. In the product roadmap, we will allow you to arrive at the pants, if they exist in the SKU catalog today, if not, we will make a very intelligent kind of, uh, recommendation. Yes, Sean Hi. What is your customer acquisition strategy? How are you going to get more people to download? Sure. <coughs> so Virginia, myself, and Sam have come up with a cost of $5 to kind of set us up. So what we're asking is, uh, in our fundraise, we, we bootstrapped this project by ourselves and we put up 165,000 of our own money to get to where we are. What we found is we went out prematurely to raise funds, uh, Sean, and we found that people said, you know, come back after you validate your proof of concept. So we had to uh, pony up a few dollars and uh, get this to where it is now. Now we're out trying to raise a million dollars, and we set aside 750,000 to achieve 150,000 users. We believe our stickiness will arrive at 250,000 users. Uh, just to kind of epitomize that, we went to shop.org two weeks ago, 
and we heard from uh, a few top CEOs in the fashion-based SI world and technology. And they said what you've come up with gives our end users data that does not exist and cannot be bought or purchased from Facebook. Imagine the ability for us to tell Celine that did you know that when someone wears your handbag that they pair it with a Zara top? And did you know when they wear Daniel Wellington that they're, that they're going to top shop as well? That data does not exist. And we validated this with our brand partners. Yes? Uh, just building on Sean's question, uh, what are you using that money for? What, what kind of channels are you using to get users on it? Uh, yeah. Sounds like you got your first thousand users on launch, like moving forward, especially with some money. What are you going to do to get more people to continue to grow? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're to, it's a great question we're asked often. Do you want to answer it or do you want me to? So we're, 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 we're we're talking to a few folks out of Orlando and a company out of LA that's really going to steer this for us. I mean, we, as chefs in this project, know what we do very, very well. And the first time something comes along that we don't do well, we're happy to ask for help. So we're talking to a few firms out of Orlando and LA that will really lead this effort. Because again, we are laser focused on helping this democratization and coming up with this consumer to consumer model. But I hope that answers your question, right? We know what we know very well. But we're, we're leading some experts. So you're, you're kind of using another team to do the customer acquisition part of it? 100%. We're, we're, I mean, Virginia Lee, well, she's a senior executive at Nielsen, is an electrical engineer. Sam just left Microsoft to join us, and I come from an analytics background. Yes? So speaking, speaking to your background, what is your background in Silicon Valley, and Mike? how did you kind of come up with this concept? Sure. Uh, it's a great question. So um, I left corporate America three weeks ago to put it all on the line. I've got a family, my wife doesn't work, so today I have zero income. This was conceived when I was living in Walnut Creek outside of San Francisco. My next door neighbor was number 92, Demetri Evans, who played for the San Francisco 49ers. Demetri was a walking billboard for Nike. Yet, the minute he walked out of our building in San Francisco, no one knew his name, but they all assumed, and they saw him in Nike. So you would have this episodic moment where you would say, wow, I'm gonna assume he's an athlete, celebrity.com, the minute you walked into Nordstrom, that subliminal message will stay implanted in your mind. You walk directly to Nike. So Dimitri became a dear friend to us, still is. He's retired from the NFL. And uh, we could have opted to, uh, to, to stay in the status quo and call this news feed. This is called Billboard, based on Dimitri Evans' life. Yes? I have a couple questions. Um, first one is what market are you trying to, to bring into? Wood market? Yeah. Sure. So we often hear from our advisors, Virginia. Remember, Nielsen owns uh, every bit of data on everything we do today and did yesterday. We often hear that we'll scale from 16 to 25 <coughs> uh, 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 demographic. I argue the fact that there are folks that are in the 25 to 55 range age that love the way they look, know exactly what they're wearing, and are too afraid to ask one when they're at the coffee shop, excuse me, I have to ask you. Who is that line? If that entire community was on Facebook, we would inspire, you'd be able to buy the contents, and you'd be able to uh, find exactly what you wanted. Can I ask you something? What is your favorite piece of clothing or garment or accessory you're wearing right now? Right now? Just at this moment. Probably the jacket. Okay. Let me show you something. So using user-generated content, you've heard how powerful it is from Nielsen. I am now creating, your, your name, sir? Aaron. Aaron. Sorry, nothing I can do about connection. Aaron, I just created your own department store using user-generated content. In the end, you will be following people that you value, trust, and respect. Not the mannequin the sales board or Tom Brady on the cover of GQ, where you say, God, I don't know, Sid, but this bozo does dress well, and I'm too afraid to ask him who he's wearing. You never need to ask me again. My goal is to recreate and digitize the department store. So, so my favorite pair of shoes, you can't buy at the department store. I sure. Got like twenty dollars on Amazon. Sure. And they look like thousand dollar shoes. But um, how do I? So, do you have some way of <coughs> me putting that on there? Right. Yeah. So it's not like a typical name brand. Right? Yeah. So at minimum, we need two pieces of data. So every time someone uploads content to our site, that's my uh, wife and boy, by the way. So it still has a brand. Though. Yeah. yeah, but it's not a traditional one. Sure. I'm sure it's made at the sweatshop. What we did, 
to improve our, 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 our pilot is that we hand selected, the three of us were missing two people. One of our, our, our co founders is in route to India right now to do a launch party. Uh, what we did is we hand selected 775 brands and retailers between Target and Neiman Marcus. So imagine any mall in the US and think about every store between Target and Neiman Marcus. So we hand selected 775 that we added to this list to prove our point. Now, in version two, and we're one phone call away from either picking the Rakuten folks out of China or Shoppable out of New York to do the deep link. The minute we finish this next phase of technology, we'll pick up 55 million SKUs. Right now, we have 775 brands of retailers. So, There'll be more brands, including that brand, and you can add them so you can submit them to add those brands. And, 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 and to drive your phone home, there's something that's very important here. We've asked for two critical pieces of information, and that's it. The retailer is optional. We envision a day and age where if you walk into Nordstrom right now, you and I, if we walk into the Nordstrom at International Mall, I guarantee you can name out 50 brands that are on the sales floor. Think about the small portion of Nordstrom that is the vertical offering for Mr. John Nordstrom. It's 200 square feet of men's underwear, shirts, blazers, and ties. The day and age has arrived if you follow what Jeff Bezos started 22 and a half years ago when he drove cross country to start Amazon and wrote the business plan as he was driving. Disintermediation. Those brands are now saying, why the hell do I need a drop ship out of Italy to BWI port and drive it to North Carolina and then take a flight to International Mall in Tampa when I can sell to this gentleman directly. That is our goal. So, I, uh, we're going to post a couple days ago about 500 startups and we're going to get 20,000 applications. So what are some of the common themes among the 20,000 applications? What would be better? And one of them was if, you know, if you're presenting an idea that you feel like you've seen people have done before, how do you quickly differentiate uh, who the competition is and what you're doing that's different that will work better this time? So I don't know a lot about this space, but I know that there have been other apps in the past that are tagged with somebody's wearing in a magazine or Instagram or whatever, see where they bought it, go buy it. Like that whole path has been tried a couple times. So okay. what's different about the way you're doing it? Sure. Who are your competition? And why would I, you know, come an investor, why would I spend, you know, invest money into this versus some of the other, you know, apps that maybe are have a traction that are, uh, you know, helping people buy what they see on social media? Sure. It's a great question. I mean, We've learned from all those folks that came before us, and we try to use the best of their parts, parts of their application, and come up with bespoke. More importantly, none of these people in this space, and the space is very hot, right? User-generated content has created this new sales path. Remember, two billion images are uploaded every day. We found a patent that is provisional at the moment that embeds the critical pieces of information. Right now, we are a user-generated community, and we're seeing. 1,625 uploads to our community. So we've taken the best parts of the ecosystem now, and there's, I could probably rattle off 35 to 40 people that are in the space. Can you, can you, okay, so who are your top two, and what are you doing different, better than others? I would argue that many would tell us that, uh, again, the feedback we hear is that, God, this could be the next step that Instagram is missing. Right, so I would argue that Instagram could turn this on potentially Overnight, right? But not Instagram, but who, who else is doing the post it, tag with you, tag their look for the yeah. bio? So there's, uh, there's apps that come out every day. I'll just cite a few uh, uh, Fashion Tap, which was on Shark Tank. Um, Project September launched recently. That's the only that found it built. So there's several in the space. We believe we've got a unique twist on it, and uh, it's sticky. And now we've got to drop that point home. But we've taken bits and pieces of a lot of folks that are in the space that have come before us and come up with this. None of them have followed the provisional patent. Our focus is to keep building the product and making that our, our patent utility. I'll move on to other questions, but I think I'm missing what that, what that twist is, but I don't sure. so, so, so I can just briefly, the data, the data basically is the key to what's going on here behind the scenes. So you saw a small preview of the speaker version of all the data that's available there, both the consumer themselves, but also the retailers and brands. It's something nobody else is really thinking about, and for this day and age of data basically is king. If you think about what Facebook knows about you, you don't know. So we have information here that we're not only sharing with the actual consumer themselves, but we're also sharing with the same information with the retailers. Um, 
publish it in that time, but how much deep, how much data we can show. We've we got some more physical issues right there. It's also a barrier of entry that we're, we're basically creating, all right? So we've got something we could try to pick up on and do that quickly, but to get to the point that we're already at now, <clears throat> just a few weeks into launch, it's going to be more challenge for them. Right? If you also consider the fact that we have um, some tacit advantages in, in, in the personnel on staff, if you have staff founders and really go out and create connections with uh, brands and with uh, other customers. Yes, that's you. Okay. Yes. I was just wondering, can you actually upload like uh, a one-off designer, like a local designer? Would that be something you could actually sure. mark in here? So that local sure, so right now, it's, could be tagged? absolutely. So right now, we've got 24 local retailers and retailers that we're manually adding. On our website, we've asked someone to sub we, we put up a function where you can submit your brand for, for uh, submission. Uh, for sort of consideration, and we're getting emails daily. So last night at 11:05, we had a travel junkie, a T-shirt brand based in St. Pete. Good. Yeah. So we've we've got 20, I think 22 or 23 local brands. We're all about supporting our our immediate surroundings. Yes. So I think this question was answered before, but but more actually for um, So it's two part. One is how are you approaching the retailers? Sure. Two is how. I've built several very profitable businesses, so I'm following the money right now. I'm trying to figure out monetize why. Sure. How are the company making money, and how are the speakers making money? Right. Sure. Uh, after I've done, you know, my social, you know, tagging, and you know, I got the likes, and it's up there. How 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 is it monetized? Uh, so in, 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 in version two, we will start the skew integration process. So today, you arrive at the root of Zara, right? Just to validate our proof of concept. Using one of two people, and we're leaning towards a company called Shoppable out of New York City. Do you know? Yeah. So our, we have our final meeting with Heather Rui today to decide if we're going to go with them. In choosing a back-end partner, we pick up this deep link out to Zara, out to men's clothing casual shirt Zara. If this shirt exists in the product catalog today, <coughs> we will take a link to it. If not, we'll take you to the first <coughs> men's clothing shirt. In return, Zara has a has agreed to something called LinkShare, which is a Rakuten affiliate network out of Japan. And we will pick up 8% from every shopping cart that goes over to Zara. So there you have your affiliate model, right? We will take that 8% and we'll monetize our users, closing the loop. Shoppable's technology, just to really drive this point home, Shoppable's technology allows us to do in-app closed loop, where you will see that recommendation on our site buy the product and we'll write that, route that POS statement out. So it's absolutely, it's a revenue share model, and then we've got an a la carte subscription model to our analytics, where Zara will say, yes, I do want to know that when someone wears our shirt, that they're pairing it with a top, top shop, right? Because they need to be wearing 100% Zara. Yes, Judy. So what can we as a community do to help Facebook? I think there's a lot of things. We'd love uh, support. We think we're onto something. We're getting uh, worldwide press uh, that we've picked up all over. Um, I wanted to show a video if we have a second. It's yeah, a you know, response. Anyhow, so uh, we're out. If you can, we'd love it if everyone joined. We've uh, put out our QR code. If you've got a scanner, you can download. That'll take you to our landing page at the App Store. We'd love to see everyone on. We'd love to support local business. And we're out raising uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So there's several things you can do. Yes. Nope, Alright, so to keep things moving quickly since we started a little bit later, uh, we have events that we normally go a little bit more in detail about, but all the information will be on our newsletter at the end of this week in the links, and if you have any questions on specific ones, come see me. We have Tycon coming up that Joe over here can tell you anything about it. He spoke a little bit about the conference um, last week. So if you have any questions, please feel free to see him. You have the Caregiver Accelerator application deadline. You saw Danielle present a couple weeks back. It's a six to nine week pre-accelerator course for people specific to the caregiving industry. So if you have any questions, happy to answer that. Um, you have the co-starters with Tech Garage, which we had JJ talk about as well. And at Cultural, and then I probably just butchered, but you heard them pronounce their Cultural. El there you go. Um, so they will have their fun um, event that will be coming up as well. You saw them a couple weeks 
back. And then you also have Startup Surge at the Tampa Bay Wave, um, which is a full day of mentorships from all different types of entrepreneurs. So um, I'm of that as well. And uh, we will go ahead and I will get out of your way. And all the way from Orlando, please give a warm round of applause. Please take longer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, never mind then. Okay. Joe, well, since we have some seconds. extra time, Joe, tell us about Tycon. Yeah, sorry. So you guys were, of course, you were here last week, so just giving a quick plug. About 12 spots left. Uh, Tycon is an all-day event. It's the Indus Entrepreneurs. Um, there's a lot of investors. There are 10 startups that will be presenting to win a chance to pitch with some, some very wealthy folks. Uh, a lot of local people here that are uh, on panels. I'm going to be on the panel. Ruben and Preston are going to be on the panel. Our sponsors are going to be on the panel. Uh, panel. Maybe a panel later tonight. Um, so there's 12 tickets left. It's this Saturday. It's a full day of networking with, with really smart people. Uh, really, really uh, great investors and startups and all that. So if you're in this space, and, and I, I can't think of anything better good on Saturday to, to come to that. So the address is uh, Tycon, T-I-E-C-O-N-F-L.com, uh, and all the information is there. Tickets are, I believe, $100. Yes, sir. Uh, I just got my ticket yesterday. Um, how many people are you going to be here about? Uh, $250. So I think, I, think there are, I think there are 11 or 12 last spots, so 240 are signed up now. Hopefully Any further questions, questions can see you at. Yes, sir. All right, so again, uh, please give a warm round of applause for my loop all the way from Orlando. Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. I have some great news. The presentation and the pitch I'm about to give you actually just placed second in a statewide competition yesterday. So I'm really excited for our seed stage companies that we are through revenue and we're fair to you. But I'm really excited to get your feedback. And um, so without further ado, my name is Alexandria Agresta, the, co the founder and CEO of MyLoop, your personalized professional network designed to make your online world tailored and create meaningful connections. Now this morning I'd like you to sit back and think about a few things really quickly. How many Facebook friends do you have in your event pages, your friends list? How many LinkedIn connections do you have? Twitter followers, Instagram followers? Another range in the hundreds, most of you now in the thousands. Now out of those hundreds and hundreds of people, <coughs> how many of those people do you value? Truly value? How many of those type in your success, your personal and business success? Now imagine if there was a way to never have to accept a friend request, a connection, a follow ever again, but be connected to the ones that you want. The ones that you truly want and the ones who enhance your personal and business success. And my hope offers just that. Now, as for the current challenges in MyLoops industry, our current platforms, while we do have platforms that cater to business networking activities, there are none that mirror our holistic life and our organic way of communication. Second, easy user ability. Login and registration processes are long and tedious. Once we're finally in, what do we do? Where do we go? What do we click? Ultimately, a lack of full functionality and transparency. And third, the social model that we've all adapted to based off mutual friends and degrees of separation. I'd like to share a quick study based off The Guardian. Now, Facebook advertises 3.74 degrees of separation, almost half of the norm, which is six. Now, if everyone had a median of 100 friends, you'd now be connected to 10,000 people. And if you include their 100 friends, you're now at one million. And now, if you go up to five, which is not even the norm of six, you'd be connected to 10 billion people, which may raise an eyebrow because that's larger than the Earth's population. <laughs> you'd be connected to people that don't even exist. Now, is this truly how we communicate as people? So, what's the solution? The solution is MyLoop. MyLoop is a professional networking platform designed to make your online world tailored and create meaningful connections through career and business interests while providing relevant content. Uh, through our proprietary algorithm, we've created this filtration, filtration system that curates the content, providing what's valuable and wanted to the end user. Now, just a brief overview, this is our prototype. Um, MyLoop is hyper-localized, it taps into your location based off your zip code, we offer you local loops. Now each local loop has a business tag, which is the generalized business interest. Um, this is good for our data on the back end, and also an organized way for you to find what's going on if you don't know what's going on locally. So for example, example Orlando Tech Association has a technology loop. Now within each loop is a standardized news feed. Um, by, a loop, by definition, is an interest-based group that provides a multitude of things that can include uh, resources, industry news, relevant connections, local events, all related to one interest. So you'll see this consistency throughout each loop. Also, something important to remember 
This is customizable and personalized to the end user. So people can come and go as they please into each loop, only, provide, only seeing what they want to see on their menu screen. Also, each loop shrinks and grows with size uh, based on the user's activity within the set loop. So how are we different than LinkedIn, our largest competitor, along with Meetup and Facebook? The main thing that we do, like I said, our algorithm, we curate the content. Um, platforms right now, it's just this blanket distribution of content, and it's not truly valuable to what we're interested in as people. Uh, second, we're community driven. While it's great to be connected to people in different cities, states, and countries, uh, we want to thrive on, on our day to day um, in our local community. Third, we're career focused, which, interesting fact, we dedicate 37% of our daily routine to business or related, work or related activities, which is even more than we sleep. Um, each loop provides really acute target audiences, which is valuable to our user and also on our other end, our customer. And last, while our competitors focus on the masses of connections, we truly value quality relationships. As for our revenue model, we are a cloud-based model generating revenue off our subscription fees. Uh, so we actually have a two-sided uh, product. We have our user, which is free for them to use, and then on the back end, we have our customer, which are businesses or organizations looking to gain or increase traction through social media marketing or uh, advertising. So uh, businesses and organizations can purchase the loop if it's not exist existing already, or they can purchase it if it has if it exists and has a large user following. And based on the amount of users, uh, the price scales. Um, so it gets more expensive as more people in the loop. Uh, we'll also generate revenue um, with co-op advertising and also offer uh, an alternative of sponsorship packages. Uh, quickly, our acquisition strategy for our user, we're going to um, have a user segment of community influencers along with uh, strategic partnerships of channels that have a large following in the city that we'd like to launch in initially. Uh, for customer, we're going to elect key individuals as product champions and align their interests with ours with a revenue share of restricted stock unit plan. I'd like to briefly touch on data analytics because we have this um, really multifaceted product in the future of my loop on the back end. Once we have a large user traction and uh, customers, we can become this massive data organizer of uh, big data within the social networking industry. As for our projections, um, we won't see revenue until year four, but by year three, we'll have one million users. Uh, year four, we'll see 15 million. Year five, 30 million, and three million users. As for our team, um, we have a really dedicated group of individuals, um, equal balance of visionaries and realists to really make this product uh, get to market and thrive. And uh, I won't say my name. So, uh, going back real quick to your customer acquisition yes. strategy. Um, I'm sorry, can you go one slide to your, your user growth? So, um, what are you? So, what are you at now? How many we're, users? Are you we're at? just no, on that one. Yeah, okay. these are based off um, estimates that we did as a team, based off uh, digital commerce, social media, advertising, marketing in North America. Okay. So, do you have an idea going back to your customer acquisition strategy? Yes. What gets you that hundred? What gets you that five hundred? <laughs> what gets you the the millions? We have a supplemental slide of our marketing strategies. Um, we're actually, interestingly enough, going to use our competitors. Um, as social media is the number one um, user acquisition strategy right now. Um, we're also going to implement SEO, pay per click, and the co-op advertising is really great. That's going to create these strategic partnerships where um, we can advertise together. Um, app cross promotion is really big as well, and we're, we'll be launching in Orlando initially, um, so we already have some great connections. And then once we have funding and can sporadically grow, we'll be choosing the top ten cities and going from there. That's how we. So Facebook just recently got in trouble for curating your content. Um, since humans all have inherent biases to what we think is relevant and not, what, are, what steps are you putting in place to mitigate bias creeping into your, uh, into your app? So to prevent people from posting to irrelevant content? Well, no, just, just giving a skewed view of what's actually going on in the web, like uh, particular causes or particular uh, Areas you'd like to steer uh, steer clear from, like, steer clear from, or steer people into that that sort of thing, if as opposed to giving like a a real picture or a a customized picture of what the user actually would 
thoughts? If I'm understanding your question correctly, um, initially we're not going to have people who have, or users have the ability to post. It's just going to be content relative to the interest that they chose. So you're willingly going into this knowing what you want. So if you go into the Orlando Tech Association, you know the content that you're going to get. And how we do it is um, through the APIs of certain partnerships that we are going to have of getting the content. Does that answer your question? Uh, not really, but I'm not sure I can explain that question any better. So, okay. yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no, okay. Sorry. Can I ask a similar question? Sure. Maybe it's the same one. Um, so the, the curation algorithm that you're yeah. talking about, uh, what, is, what are you curating? Are you, you're, so you're saying users are not posting. Initially. Right. And so you're curating news feeds or feeds yes. from various sources that you contracted with. Yes. To give you the source. Okay. So the curation is really leading through. And I think his question is that Facebook got in trouble for curating the news feed of people to uh, more liberal left bias for these that bias because of the people who were actually doing the curation tend to be in that demographic. And there was some consternation about that. Um, the algorithms that you're using, are they going to be completely automated or are they going to be human generated? It's, to, to it's basically this template based on each zip code. Okay. Yeah. So the zip code is, so you're just using basically filtering rather than curation. Yeah. Curating it implies that there's a person or a very yeah. sophisticated algorithm. Yeah. You're more filtering it's by. more of a filtration system, right. yeah. So probably a better word to use, yeah. Okay. yeah. Excellent by the presentation. I don't know why you like that second place. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. So the, great, I'll follow that up. So LBS, location-based services, right? Yes. Great. Um, what if people don't opt in to have location services on? So this is how we're approaching it. We're catering to users' privacy, privacy preferences upon entry because initially, what through our customer research or consumer research, people don't like to put their information immediately. If you're connecting your Facebook, it's all of your information right away. So going the route of just tapping your location, you're not being vulnerable, you're not putting yourself out there immediately, and it acts as like an introduction into our platform. And if you feel that it's valuable to you and you want to continue more and have more features, then you give us your information and connect from there. So that's kind of the, uh, we have a three, three tiered product model um, on the user end, so that's kind of where that came from. And if they don't initially, then maybe it's not the right path, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Can you tell me what kind of content you would envision one of your sponsors wanting to put in front of people? I mean, is it purely ad based? What, what um, so say one million cups, you know, we had a loop and you know, we got 500 users, you're like, wow, I like this platform, I'd like to purchase it for a monthly or yearly price. Um, you just post your events and make events within the loop. Um, things of this nature, people that you feel you want to promote, it's basically promoting your product, service, brand, or cause in any way that you like related to that, <coughs> what you're doing. So yes, advertisements, it, it, you're advertising everything essentially, but Everything related to that. that makes sense. Events, connections. It makes sense. Okay. All right. <laughs> Is there any way for subscribers to interact with the PC So initially, as like I said, we're not going to have people post right away because we're still figuring out how we can go about preventing people from posting um, not related things because that was brought up. Um, so you can like and or you can like and comment for now. Um, and then from there, we are going to uh, add features like posting. Is there any way to contact people in the room? Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a, a messaging service, yeah, or embedded messaging. So uh, they'll have their profile and you can message them. I think you were, I saw your So uh, the monetization comes in uh, to the creator of the loop, because you mentioned that there was going to be a cost associated with the amount of users in each loop. Yes. So the actual company, entity, whatever that's actually creating that loop is the person that pays for it. So the users don't pay anything. Like when you get to the point where me as a user aren't able to you know, maybe post something that's relevant to that actual loop. Mm -hmm. um, does everybody pay, users and the creator of the loop, or just the loop creator? So like, um, as I mentioned, we have this two-sided 
We have our user and then we have our customer. So on the um, user side, like I was saying, we have three tiered products. So that we have that initial anonymous user. So you're just, it's like the introduction. Second, it's still free. Second, you connect your Facebook or username and password. You're in. You can do all the features. And then third, we have the community influencers. Um, these would be people, local individuals that we feel, get, um, like a great example, this woman Pam, she puts on so many events and she wants to bring people, have paid events, things like that. So she would still be on the user side, but have that subscription-based fee. Um, and she can control and manage her own link to promote herself. And then the <coughs> business side of the B2B is the business, the organizations in business. So that <coughs> whoever controls their social media marketing would be the person that controls the what is What is that called? Um, I didn't put cost for a reason because they're not set in stone, but um, tier one would be around 50. Tier B would be around 90. And this would be a custom quote um, because it can be anywhere from 2002. I mean, how many? Okay. So, mm -hmm. I you next. so I'm a little curious about you go to target strategy. So this seems like it might work if you, know, you can get reach critical mass for users, right? Right. So, also, a target market of everyone is really broad and probably not going to work. So what is your exact target? I'm sorry, I didn't mention that in the presentation. Um, so we actually have an interesting target market. We, or we pivoted from just millennials um, to people in transitional stages in their lives, with, which align with our career focus platform. So these can include high school to college, college to graduate school, job to career, promotions, career changes, career to retirement, so under the, through these transitions, yes, we have different demographics, but that's our target market because this will be beneficial to when you're, these are times in your life when you're vulnerable and have to reach out to build, rebuild, or enhance your professional network. <coughs> yeah, it's just a follow-up. Uh, as long as so those those users are definitely not going to have any money. So I, I know that you're not trying to charge a user, just mm -hmm. try to keep that in mind. Okay. So as for the user, that's the target market right. and then ask for our customer it's going to be initially small to medium businesses and then we reach out to larger corporate right. businesses but they would probably be apt to do the sponsorship package instead of indefinitely signing off with us initially. So two sides does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Alright so the reason why I have a thousand Facebook friends is because I thought I cared right away <laughs> but it turns out I really didn't. So what does the app do to um, uh, show me that I really don't actually care about something and then get, let me get rid of that content so that I don't end up having a screen full of little tiny bubbles? Um, you can join or remove yourself or remove it anytime. It's coming. Like I said, if you initially want to check out 10 different things going on and you like it, but then you don't really care about the people in it or the content, mm -hmm. you can delete it. Like I said, it's really personalized and customizable to what <coughs> you like and what you care about. All right. So, um, not a question, but more of sort of a something that uh, something that popped up in my head yeah. when talking about this. So, what you're doing is it seems to me that you're carving out some real estate. You're synthesizing the real estate market, right? Real estate meaning uh, a, a, like a URL is real estate. And in any kind of so the loops are real estate. These are things that have value yes. based on I like some that metric. Yeah. Um, now there's another similar market out there, which is Reddit. Yes. Right? So pretty much anybody can create a subreddit for anything they want to. Some of them have zero value. Most of them have zero value. Right. Some of them are extremely valuable. I have no idea how Reddit is monetizing the you know all the other are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> slash R and slash technology. But um, it just seems to me that that's an interesting model to look at those kind of organizations and how they're monetizing their synthetic real estate markets mm -hmm. and figuring out the values of these different tiers. And uh, you know, obviously you're, you're doing it right. There, there's zero value at all right. until there are users who are subscribing to these loops and right. showing interest in it. Right. So I'm not sure right now how to it is for me to go to do an app like this right. versus Reddit, right? Yeah. right? And subscribe mm -hmm. to a subreddit which is completely free and completely anonymous, mm -hmm. and I can subscribe to all kinds of freaky stuff under a pseudonym, right? Uh, <laughs> true. Know, Very true. Uh, versus you know my regular one that everyone can know. Right. 
Um, yeah, so just so, some interesting things. I don't know how much you considered those things. But. No, yeah, and that's a really great point because although I, um, Reddit is not in my top three competitors, they are, um, and it's really, I think it's smart for me to further explore how they go about things and the community that they've created um, to see how we can either emulate certain parts but also differ ourselves. So. I think the community is, is kind of missing from your your presentation. I don't know how much you consider that side of it, but okay. but building a community and those connections and that social graph within the loop right now, the connections that you have all your friends and everything, I'm not I didn't see too much in there about how you're going to encourage people to build those connections within your app okay. and to leverage their feedback to right. you know again use the, the product you're selling is the customer's place. Right. Right. Just like Facebook everything. You know, you're not the customer, you're the product. Right. Um, so you're trying to curate, get all these people to volunteer to be your product, mm -hmm. and how do you entice them to be your product? Thank you. It's good. A lot of good feedback to think about. Thank you. So I, I like that you brought the screenshots of the app, and you're at this stage where it's okay. This is this is my pitch. This is what I'm going to build. But building an app uh, takes a lot of time. It's really expensive. There's a lot of work in it, mm -hmm. and it all makes sense if ultimately people are taking the action that you want yes. on the other side. But if they don't, then Right. So, is there a, what I'd like to ask at this stage is, is there a way that you can test or validate what you want people to do without building an app? In other words, could you, is there a certain thing where a subreddit or a Facebook group or something else that doesn't require a heavy investment in tech can yeah. validate, okay, there's this missing piece, you know, like, hey, these other social networks address A, B, and C, mm -hmm. but I think that they really fail to address D. So, this is going to be my <coughs> test of proof that D is missing. I could do it through another technology. And then it became with that and said, okay, now I need the you know the money, the time to build the app around. It, you know, it, it could be thought of, or is there another way that you could? Because for right now, this is just looking to me like it's another LinkedIn group, or it's another Facebook group, or it's another. So I feel like I'm missing something that says, oh wow, yeah, this is this is a piece that I don't have in my right. social life. Um, that's an interesting uh, view on it. We've, like I said, we've done one-on-one. -on -one face-to-face -face customer validation with this, but um, I guess we're trying to figure out a way to not completely build the app, but get it some sort of simple wireframe and prototype, and then have a couple hundred, in beta, a couple hundred users to see how they interact and see if what we're doing is validated. Um, so I guess really just going about it um, in the cheapest way possible to get it in a simple, simple, bare minimum product to see how people I just challenge you to think even more minimum than product. It was one, if this one thing doesn't work, then they don't have that, right? Like what's the one behavior? It's that people can't find a good curated or like a tech association to list the photos of this. Like, what's that missing piece and what is the minimum thing you can do to find out if you've got a hook there? Yeah, thank you. I think you said your revenue model is subscription based? Yes. Ultimately? Yes. And I think for the first year or two, Have you considered uh, advertising instead of? Um, well, we're also going to incorporate both. Yeah, both. Yes, we're going to incorporate both. Because um, what we've seen is a lot of um, up and coming apps are solely relying on just advertising. Um, and it's really difficult to get that large amount of advertising right off the bat, make yeah. a lot of money. Because um, sometimes it can be a penny on the dollar. So um, we've incorporated this model that we feel like if we're in the subscription base along with. So what can we as a community do to help you grow your method? Um, as you know, we're still early stage in doing customer validation and building the product. So um, now we're all connected. If you have any advice or any connections or things that you could help think would help me as an entrepreneur and a learner and thinker in the product, um, please reach out. I'd really love to connect with you. And I'll come back once we're uh, an up and running product and then we can go from there. <laughs>
75-ish uh, chapters around the country that do the same thing at 9 a.m. every Wednesday in each one of these cities. And they have something called a passport program, which means if you've presented at any one million cups chapter in any other city, and they've already said, if you're cool to present here, then you can just go and transport that presentation uh, to any other city. So there's already a couple chapters in Florida alone if you've presented before, know people where you can make the drive and you know help get feedback